Hi friends, we would like to understand the parallelogram law of forces. This law is very important in order to understand the resultant of system of forces. So, let us start with the parallelogram law of forces. So, first we will discuss about the statement of the law. So, let me write down the statement first. So, this law says if two forces are represented by two adjacent sides of a parallelogram. So, suppose we have a parallelogram here. So, this parallelogram let me call this point as point A, this is point B. This is point C and this is point D. Okay. So, as per the parallelogram law of forces, it says that if two adjacent sides of the parallelogram, that is AB side AB, are representing two forces, let us say force F1 and this one is representing force, let us say F2. Right. Then the diagonal of this particular parallelogram, that is AC, would be representing the resultant of these two forces. Okay. This is called as the parallelogram law of forces. So, I will write down the statement first. If two adjacent sides of a parallelogram represent two forces, then the diagonal will represent the resultant of two forces. This is what the statement says. Now, we have to use this particular law to find out the magnitude of resultant as well as direction of the resultant. Now, here if you look at the angle between two forces is this angle friends. That angle I am calling as theta. Right? And this is the resultant force as we know that this is the resultant force. So, the angle made by resultant with the horizontal, this is going to be horizontal in certain way. So, the angle made by the resultant with the horizontal, let me call this as alpha. So, this is uh, this represents the direction of the resultant. Okay. So, we have to find the magnitude as well as the direction of the resultant force that is fr, resultant force. Okay. So, let us do it. So, first part is I am going to find the magnitude of resultant force to find the magnitude of resultant force. force. That is, I want to find the value of fr. This is the magnitude of resultant friends. Now, to find the magnitude of resultant, if I can find out this particular length, that is length ac. So, this particular length represents the magnitude of resultant force, that is fr. So, to find this particular length, that is length ac, that is the magnitude of resultant force fr, I will be doing one small construction. I will draw perpendicular from point c to segment ab. So, I have drawn a perpendicular from point C to this segment AB, okay, which is meeting at point M over here and this angle is 90 degrees because it is perpendicular. So, I will use a triangle ACM, this triangle I am going to use and this, ang uh, this angle is 90 degree. So, by using Pythagoras theorem, I can find out the value of AC. Now, as we know that this is a parallelogram. So, since this is F2, this value is also going to be equal to F2. That is very trivial. And this, since it is F1, so this is also going to be F1, okay, because it is parallelogram. So, opposite sides are equal. So, length indicates the magnitude of the given particular force. So, this indicates the magnitude of force F1. So, now let us consider a triangle ACM. So, considering triangle, triangle ACM, angle M is 90 degrees. So, we can say by Pythagoras theorem, AC square, that is this side square equals am square plus cm square. So, now as you know that am is nothing but ab plus bm friends, ab plus bm the whole square plus cm square. Now, ab plus bm is a plus b the whole square and we know that a plus b the whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square friends. So, I will be using same expansion over here. So, it is ab square plus 2 times ab times bm plus bm the whole square plus the remaining is here cm the whole square. So, cm the whole square and that if I simplify, now you know that from this particular triangle that bm square plus cm square means these two terms. If I combine bm square plus cm square is nothing but bc square because this is also a right angle triangle. Okay, This is simply bc square. So, instead of bm square plus cm square, I can write bc square. So, remaining is this here. So, AC square in the left hand side would continue and we have now AB square plus 2 times AB times BM and then BM square plus CM square we got as BC square. BM square plus CM square is BC square. So, I will write down here BC square. So, if you look at here, since this angle is theta, this angle, this angle is also going to be theta because this side that is BC and AD they are parallel sides. So, this, this angle is also going to be theta. So, in this triangle, if you look at here, in triangle CBM, right, angle M is 90 degree, as you know that. 
so i can say here that sin theta is what cm upon cb sin theta is nothing but opposite opposite is what cm opposite side divided by hypotenuse so that will be equal to what cm by cb or bc cm by bc right so from here i can get the value of cm as bc sin theta that's very important so cm will be getting bc sin theta okay so we got cm equal to bc sin theta friends okay so similarly we can also get bm bm as bc cos theta that's very trivial this is very important friends remember so you can always remember this cm is going to be what bc bc is the diagonal this one hypotenuse so bc sin theta and this bm is going to be bc cos theta okay so this is very important outcome now instead of bm i can write down what friends bc cos theta fine so this bm term this is important term for us so bm is nothing but bc cos theta so i'll put it here because i want expression in terms of the known values so here known values are friends either ab or ad that is f1 f2 or bc is also known to us because both are equal this one this is also f2 so we want everything in terms of either f1 or f2 right that is why i am converting every other things like bm i am converting in terms of f2 that is bc okay so let's see what we'll get so this ac square would be as it is now we'll be having ab square as it is no problem because ab is known to us ab is nothing but f1 okay now 2 times ab again ab is known to us ab is nothing but f1 now this B, bm is not known to us but bm is nothing but bc cos theta so i'll write down that into bc cos theta so now this is fine for us now i know this term also okay bc uh, bc is nothing but f2 so that is fine and again we have bc square bc is again f2 so no problem bc square now i'll be putting all the corresponding values so as we know ac is nothing but the resultant fr so this is going to be resultant force fr the whole square now ab is what ab is this side so that is f1 so it is f1 square plus 2 times again ab f1 into bc is f2 friends you can see here bc is f2 and then into cos theta cos of angle between them that is this angle and again bc we got so bc square that is f2 square if i simplify this i'll get the magnitude of resultant force as square root of f1 square first force square plus 2 times the magnitude of first force into the magnitude of second force into the cos of angle between them plus magnitude of second force the whole square this is the final expression friends so friends we got the magnitude of resultant force so the magnitude of resultant force is given by fr which is equal to f1 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos of angle between them plus f2 square right so this is the magnitude of resultant force now we would like to find the angle of the resultant force that is alpha so we'll do that also so to find the angle of resultant force that is alpha we shall consider the triangle acm this triangle so considering triangle friends triangle a a c m where angle m is 90 degrees therefore if i apply tan alpha it is going to be opposite side divided by adjacent side so if i use tan alpha tan alpha is going to be opposite side divided by adjacent side so let's see what you will get so therefore tan alpha would be so if you apply tan alpha here the opposite side is going to be friends cm and the adjacent side is going to be friends am so it is nothing but cm divided by am right so from here you will get tan alpha equals now what is cm cm is nothing but bc sin theta bc is nothing but this f2 okay so i'll write down that also so it is bc sin theta friends divide by what is am so am is nothing but ab plus bm ab plus bm now if you simplify this from here you will get tan alpha equals now bc sin theta as it is no problem in denominator we have ab so ab will be as it is plus now this bm is nothing but bc cos theta bc cos theta okay so we are able to get the value in terms of ab and bc so now if i simplify this i'll be getting tan alpha as 
Now BC is nothing but this is BC friends. So BC is F2 sin theta divided by AB is what F1 plus now BC is again F2 cos theta if you see here. So we are able to get the value of tan alpha as F2 sin theta divided by F1 plus F2 cos theta. So this if you further simplify you will be getting a very simple expression friend that is alpha equals tan inverse of F2 sin theta divided by F1 plus F2 cos theta. This is the expression for angle of resultant force and this one is the expression for the magnitude of resultant force and this is the expression for direction of resultant force, direction of FR or resultant force. So we got the direction of resultant force, this is the direction of resultant force and we got this is the magnitude of resultant force. So this way you can easily find out the direction can easily find out the magnitude as well as direction of resultant force. The procedure is very simple. So we shall see one example based on parallelogram law of forces. So we have got a problem here. So let us read the question first. Find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force for the given system of forces shown in the figure. So we have got a system of forces which consists of two forces. One is 100 Newton and other is 250 Newton and the angle between them is 50 degrees ok. So we have to find the resultant of these two forces. Now as we know that we can apply the parallelogram law of forces. So we will make this a complete parallelogram ok. So if we draw a diagonal like this, this diagonal will be representing the resultant of two forces that is FR ok. So this is how we can solve this particular problem. So this is the resultant of these two forces FR is the resultant and this angle, this angle that is alpha would be showing the direction of the resultant force. Okay. So, we have got the expression for magnitude of resultant force as well as direction of resultant force. So, let us see how we can solve. So, the first thing is the magnitude of resultant force. So, the magnitude of resultant force is given by this expression that is FR equals square root of F1 square 2 times F1 F2 cos theta plus F2 square. This is the expression for magnitude of resultant. So, this is F1 we can say and this is F2 friends and the angle theta is 50 degrees. So this is theta, right. We can substitute the values of F1, F2 and theta in the expression and we can find out the magnitude of resultant force that is FR. So let us see what is the value. So F1 is 100 Newton, so 100 square plus 2 times 100 Newton. Now F2 is 250 Newtons and then angle between them is 50 degrees. So cos 50 plus F2 is 250 square friends. So if you solve this, the value of FR will come as 275.16 Newtons. So, we will get the, the magnitude of resultant that is FR equal to 275.16 Newtons. So this is the first part. The second part is we would like to find the alpha that is the direction of resultant. So, that is given by another expression friends and that expression is alpha equals tan inverse of F2 sin theta divided by F1 plus F2 cos theta. So, expression already we have derived alpha is what tan inverse of F2 sin theta F1 plus F2 cos theta. So, same expression I am going to use here. So, you will be getting from here tan inverse of F2 is 250 into sin 50 F1 is 100 plus 250 cos 50. After solving this, we will get the value of alpha is 36.30 degrees. 36.30 degrees. So, like this we are able to get the value of alpha as well as value of FR that is the magnitude of the resultant as well as the direction of resultant force. So, this is the magnitude of resultant force and this is the direction of resultant force friends that is alpha. Okay. So, similarly we can solve another problem, other problem also where the value of forces are given to us. We can easily find out the resultant of the given forces. Okay. Thank you very much.